Hi everyone, this is a video tutorial on how to componentize your application by passing directives to the states declaration in Angular UI Router. In the previous tutorial, I showed you how to use deep nested level routes so you could navigate deeper and deeper into your object and go into more details and keep all the information in the page and still change the URL so you could at any point refresh the page and come back to the same state as you left off. I'm going to use the same code base as in the last tutorial. So here we have our states declaration, our templates and the controllers for each state. And now let's componentize it by creating directives. Let's replace the workspace. So first of all, I'll create a folder called features. And inside that folder, I'll create another one called Workspace. Now, inside my Workspace folder, I will have the directive with the JavaScript code and also the HTML. So first of all, let's create the directive. I'm going to call it Workspace Directive. Um, I'll pass state params. and I'll make a, an element. Uh, I'm not gonna pass anything in the scope now. And my template URL, I'll put it in the same folder. So it's features, workspace, and I'll call it workspace, the HTML. And this is gonna be our link function that will handle, handle the logic. Um, I won't put anything in here yet. Now let's create our HTML. Workspace.html. And because I already had the HTML from the previous example, I'll just copy and paste it here. And now I can delete the previous one. Right. And now we have to add the directive to our index.html so it is features workspace workspace not directive not js so now here's the magic i'm going to replace my template url and my controller by a template attribute and what i'm going to put inside the template is the workspace directive that i just created so instead of looking for a template and a controller, it will just render straight away a directive. Now, let me remove those controllers here because they don't exist. I have put them down here so you could see how it would look like with template URL and the controller, but I didn't create the files. So now let's refresh the page. Um, so you can see everything is rendered fine. I can navigate to my to-do list, back to the workspace, and all behaves exactly the same way as it would behave if I had passed a template URL and a controller. Now let's componentize the task object. I'm going to create a folder for a task. Then let's create the directive. I'm going to call it Task directive and I'll pass state params as well. I'm gonna make it restrict E and this time I'll pass the task ID into the scope. I'll show you why and in the template URL uh, it will be also in the same location, features task and task HTML and my link function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to log the task ID that is in the state params. So the, the, the task ID that is in the URL. Now I'm going to replace my template URL here by template and I'll pass the directive. Test 
directive. And in our HTML, I'm going to add the test directive here. And let's create the template. We'll call it task. And let's get what we had previously. Just paste it here. And we can remove the old one as well. Now, if I refresh the page, you're going to see that I can open a task and in my console log you're going to see the IDs being logged which are the same as the IDs in the URL. Now this is interesting because I passed the task ID as a scope attribute this directive is now extremely reusable so for example if here in my roots declaration I pass a task ID of 9 you're going to see that I have access to this task ID here. Let me log ID as param. Now put the task ID that is in the scope. So now if I refresh the page, you're going to see that I have the ID that is in the URL and also the ID that I passed as a parameter, even if I navigate to a different task. And what this means is that this directive now is extremely reusable because I have the flexibility of looking for the ID either in the URL or I can pass it as an attribute. So maybe in some pages that I don't have the task ID in the URL, I can still render it. And also if I'm dealing with WebSocket updates, it makes it very easy for me to handle the logic because it's all in one single file and I can just listen for an event in the directive and reinitiate it when I receive an update. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. If you've got any questions, just drop me a message and I'll put the link for the project in the description of the video. Thank you for watching.